Hello, I'm going to do a short review of the Daystate Wolverine 303. Uh, this has been uh, one of my dream guns for a while and I finally decided to buy it. Before I bought it, I went through, I think, all the reviews I could find. And uh, there are some things that uh, are not mentioned in those reviews that are quite important. I won't go uh, into all details uh, because you can find them on the Daystate web, web page or in uh, other reviews. So, as you can see, a pretty big gun, very, very beautiful. The stock is amazing and the breech is really, really good. Uh, there's, there's, uh, you cannot say a bad thing about that because it's, uh, like they say, a uh, work of art. Um, it's pretty substantial to hold. It's uh, very thick. Uh, it has a 300cc uh, uh, air cylinder, um, which they claim, uh, which is capable to produce uh, uh, 12 to 15 shots. If you ask me, uh, the uh, you can actually get only 10 shots. That's, let's say, the most uh, what you can expect. Uh, from one fill uh, to get as much uh, consistent, uh, consistent shots as possible. Uh, okay, so let's get to the things that you won't hear in the reviews. Uh, and uh, let's say things that I like and things that I don't like. I will start it with things that I don't like. Um, uh, unfortunately, there are quite a few things I don't like uh, with this gun. Um, I'm, uh, I was a little disappointed not to hear anything about it in uh, other reviews. Okay, one thing is uh, it has a unique safety mechanism. As soon as you uh, lift the bolt, it's on safe. It doesn't matter if you just lift it or pull it partially back. So as soon as you lift the bolt, the trigger is locked. Uh, regardless of the fact uh, that you have uh, an additional safety over here, it's always locked when it's up. And this gives you a couple of advantages. It's mostly made, uh, as far as I know, for um, United States market because they want to bring air guns to the people who uh, own classical firearms. In uh, classical firearms, usually when you have the bolt up, it's safe. So this, let's say, this part of this theory is good, but uh, the problem uh, occurs when you cock the gun, you cannot decock it. So you have to fire it in order to decock it. Uh, and uh, uh, this this is a disadvantage for me. Uh, in my opinion, it's always safer to have the gun decocked and not cocked and put on safe. That's it's always more uh, more safe not to have the hammer cocked. Uh, and also, there's uh, another disadvantage with this. Uh, of course, if you want to remove the magazine, you have to cock the gun. And uh, for example, you shoot through one magazine, you cock the gun and you take out the magazine, you put another magazine in, you shoot 10 rounds, and then at the end, I, at least me, I would want to put the magazine out because if I leave it inside, it's dangerous. You, you, you never leave the magazine in the gun because it's uh, not deemed sa safe. So you cannot take it out without cocking the gun. So basically, after you fire your last shot and you cock the gun again to take the magazine out, and then you have to fire a dry shot uh, uh, to decock it. Or, I don't know, maybe some, <laughs> some, uh, someone wants to leave it cocked. Certainly not me, because you will wear out your spring. So, um, uh, there is a way to remove the magazine 
by not cocking the gun, but you have to like uh, put your thumb up here and then slowly uh, slowly pull the, uh, the bolt back until the, mag uh, the magazine is released, but not as far so you would cock it. It's uh, a little tricky to do, but it's possible. So you can get it out, but it's very hard. So I don't like that feature. I understand why they said uh, went with this feature, but for me personally, I would prefer that it was possible to decock it. Uh, so that's one of the things I don't like. The second thing is not that I don't like, but I expected it to be uh, different just because of the reviews. Because in most reviews, everyone mentions that it's incredibly easy to cock this gun, but it's not true. And it's normally that it's not true because it's a big bore gun, it requires a very heavy mainspring. So it's not easy to cock this gun. You can, you have to use quite a lot of force. It's not like sub 12 foot pounds gun. It's hard to cock. And the thing I like even less that you have to use uh, even larger amount of force to put, so when you cock it, to put the bolt back in. And this is uh, because of the magazine design. So, the magazine is designed uh, to hold five rounds, but that's not important right now. And you put uh, pellets in uh, head first. And what's retaining them not to fall through is the skirt. So the skirt is slightly larger than the hole in the magazine. Now, of course, this is, this is, uh, there is no other way to do it if uh, you don't want the pellet to fall straight through, then to have a large, uh, slightly larger uh, skirt or slightly smaller hole than the pellet skirt. But with this gun, it, this, is, uh, th this uh, uh, size difference are extremely big. So basically, the size of this hole is 7.7 .7 millimeters and the pellet is 7.9. And uh, when you cock the gun, and then when you're trying to uh, uh, move the bolt forward and lock it, and when you're pushing it forward, you have to, uh, you have to overcome the force of pellet going through, so pellet reducing its size to go through smaller hole in the magazine. And uh, although this, this is not a big thing, you just sort of slam it to put it in, uh, the bigger problem comes in hand when the pellet is then too small to fit in the barrel. So I actually did a picture uh, that I will also uh, show you later. Uh, I uh, put one pellet through uh, the magazine, so it was the skirt was slightly reduced. And then I put the pellet in the barrel. I had the barrel uh, removed from the rifle. And then uh, I took a picture with some backlight on the other side of the barrel. And uh, the pellet is actually loose in the barrel. You can see lights uh, in the lens in the barrel. So, uh, so this, this was like a shock to me <laughs> because um, when I when I saw this, I immediately thought this cannot be, uh, this gun cannot shoot accurate uh, when uh, you use the magazine. And it's true, the gun shoots much more accurately if you hand load pellets uh, instead of using the magazine. This was a very big disappointment because this is, this is not easy to change, it's not easy to make these holes bigger. And uh, they only have to be 0.1 millimeter bigger, so uh, 7.8 millimeter, to be uh, enough big uh, not to uh, be not to reduce the pellet uh, as much that it would be loose in the barrel. And uh, of course, uh, I, I intend to do that do that with this uh, magazine. Um, 
so just uh, I, I just bought a rimmer, adjustable rimmer, uh, to enlarge uh, the hole to about uh, 7.8 mill millimeters, or maybe a little more, but not too much because I don't want the pellets to fall through uh, the magazine when I load it. Um, apparently, I'm not the first uh, person that had bad experience with uh, uh, these magazines. Uh, because I noticed that I think on Top Airgun, the American web page, I think it's Top Airgun, uh, they also they also offer magazine with uh, rimmed holes in it. But they want quite a lot of money for it. Uh, okay, so um, uh, um, let's let's continue with the magazine. Uh, the other thing I don't like uh, about the magazine, this is not a big thing, but it only holds five rounds. And this, I think, it's due to uh, the fact that uh, 22 caliber uh, has 10 rounds. And uh, if they were to make like eight rounds, which would fit on this size, they would actually have to use... Uh, uh, not use a different design, but make a complete new assembly of the magazine because uh, the indexing indexing uh, would be different. Um, so they dis just decided to drill out every second hole. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. It's easier than to make 8, then you may have to make everything from scratch. Uh, this is, as I said, not a big deal. But why don't you use? Or why won't you use the whole space if you have it available? Um, so uh, I also uh, draw it in uh, SolidWorks uh, a new uh, magazine, so only the rotating part that has eight holes. And uh, there are uh, some other internal parts needed to be changed. And you can put the other drum in this plastic case. And then you have an uh, 8-shot uh, magazine, which is, of course, far better than 5. Uh, okay, so that's it about magazine. Uh, okay, if we are still at things that I don't like about this gun, uh, the port transfer port size is only five millimeters. Now I understand why they state did this. Uh, it was actually probably because of tier two reasons. First of all, they have to get in to drill it through this hole because the whole bridge assembly is, is uh, uh, single piece. This is the first reason, and the second reason is because they wanted to have a relatively small cylinder and still get a lot of unregulated shots at high power. Uh, so they went with the, up with the pressure and smaller transfer ports, so the transfer port actually uh, limits the power. Uh, and they also made a clever way to for you to uh, disable uh, enlarging this port. I actually enlarged mine uh, and I had a terrible disaster. I basically ruined the bridge. I managed to solve it. I won't go into details in this video. And uh, I will tell you later about the results uh, with the bigger transfer port and the standard transfer port. Um, uh, well, what else? Okay, as you probably know, the gun is pretty loud, but you can add a silencer, suppressor. Uh, it's not uh, legal in my country, but uh, for those uh, of you that don't have problem with that, it's no problem. Uh, uh, okay, regarding shot count, as I said at the start, I said that um, uh, regarding uh, velocity, consistent velocity, you get about 10 shots, so two magazines. But in uh, uh, regarding uh, accuracy, I would use only f uh, five to seven shots because uh, it's extremely accurate with this five to seven shots. 
but uh, if you overcharge it, if you charge it to 250 bars, which is not overcharging, it's still a, a safe working pressure, uh, but uh, the gun gets less accurate after 230 bars. So it's the most accurate is uh, from uh, 230 bars and down to about 170 bars. And it's most consistent as well, because if you get over 230 bars, the velocity is starting to decrease. Um, so basically, uh, I would use one magazine if you use it unregulated. Uh, and uh, if you want maximum performance, maximum velocity and maximum accuracy. And that would be from 230 bars down. Uh, so, uh, um, partially why I'm doing this video is uh, to uh, let you know the results of uh, inserting in a regulator. Uh, I did quite a bit of testing. Uh, I used the Altaros regulator because in my opinion they are one of the best. Uh, uh, I tried several several different pressures. I did testing and recorded uh, Crony uh, with uh, standard transfer port, so unmodified, and with modified transfer port. I will also later explain how you should set your hammer for uh, regulated version to get most efficiency and biggest uh, uh, the best consistency possible. Uh, uh, the gun truly shoots well with the regulator. It's extremely accurate and good thing about the regulator is you don't have to worry if you are closer to 200 bar or if you're closer to your regulator pressure, the gun shoots always the same. So there is no, uh, okay, this is um, uh, 250 bars, I have to aim a little bit, bit to this side for, uh, for the gun to shoot accurately or etc. etc. Um, I got about 15, uh, so I'm, now I'm talking about unmodified uh, gun, so transfer port is standard 5 millimeter. I got about 15 shots at uh, about 110 joules. Uh, that was quite, uh, I think, uh, a good setting. It was, the gun was extremely accurate. The, I got about uh, 30 millimeter groups at uh, 90 meters, so that's about 100 yards, that's not bad. And uh, all of the 15 shots went just in the same group. Uh, it wasn't uh, important, uh, the pressure of the unregulated side of uh, the chamber was not important, so this is good, and the uh, shots were very consistent, they were about uh, 260 to 263 meters per second, which is a good velocity. And um, it, it is also my uh, recommended setting uh, for the unmodified uh, transfer port. So basically you get 15 shots at 110 joules and the regulator uh, is, uh, you should set the regulator uh, at uh, about 170 bars, perhaps even more, perhaps 180. That's, uh, I, I can't really measure that, uh, uh, the pressure that uh, precise, so I'm just giving you a choice. You try it and then decide it. A uh, good thing about uh, this it or bad thing, how it depends how you see it, uh, the gauge uh, after inserting a regulator actually shows the regulated pressure and not the pressure in the tube. The bad side is that you don't know actually how much shots you got left, but as soon as you see that the, the pressure gauge is dropping, you should refill it, of course. Um, uh, Altaros offers uh, two different uh, uh, length of the uh, chambers. So basically a regulator is, uh, uh, consists of a, a regulator with the uh, washing springs and uh, on the other side you get the chamber uh, um, so basically this is the regulator housing and th this chamber uh, uh, can be bigger or smaller 
And uh, I recommend for three or three calibers, so for 30 caliber, that you always, always use the big chamber because uh, I could get good velocities with a small chamber as well, but the shot count was always lower because I got more hammer bounce with the smaller uh, uh, cylinder, uh, so chamber, uh, because it just drained uh, the regulated side of, uh, of the chamber uh, to the point where there was almost no force closing the valve and the regular uh, sorry the hammer just bounced a couple of times and I always got much 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 uh, bigger consumption so lower efficiency than with the bigger chamber uh, uh, there is no way no I should I say uh, um, efficient way to get higher velocities uh, without making modifications on the transfer port. Um, because uh, even if you will rise pressure significantly, you won't get much bigger velocities, but you will get, of course, a slightly bigger air consumption, and also you will be much sooner uh, uh, you, the pressure on the cylinder in the cylinder will drop much sooner to the point uh, where the regulator is set, and you will have to refill the gun. So uh, I don't uh, uh, I don't recommend setting the pressure any higher than bet between 170 and 180 bars. Uh, of course, you can set it lower. You will get a couple of more shots and uh, lower velocity. An important thing to know is uh, it is not uh, is it is not uh, linear. Uh, so uh, if you increase uh, velocity by ten percent, or let's say energy, it would be better. If you increase energy by ten percent, uh, you don't get ten percent uh, uh, less shots. You get more than ten percent less. So uh, uh, increasing uh, velocity always. Uh, decreases efficiency. So if you are okay with low power, then go with lower power. I think 170 bar is great. You get 15 shots, that's acceptable. Uh, however, most people uh, does buy uh, Wolverine 303 because of its power. I, I, this is a gun well known to be able to handle higher pressures uh, because of the breech assembly is uh, very rigid. Uh, and that's true, I agree completely. Uh, the downside about this is the small transfer port. That's why I decided to uh, enlarge it. I actually made it about six, almost six and a half millimeters. Uh, this, give me, uh, this gave me uh, almost twice uh, the surface area. So um, the first thing, uh, the first test I did with this uh, uh, this modification was at uh, about 155 to 160 bar uh, on the regulator, uh, setting on the regulator, and uh, I actually got slightly higher velocities than uh, previ uh, with the previous test. So with the standard transfer port, uh, and uh, previously, of course, I had about 170 to 180 bar, um, and the shot count was 20 shots. So I gained five shots and even gained some velocity, so some energy. The, so <laughs> transfer port, bigger transfer port for a regulator, always means. Uh, bigger shot count and uh, bigger efficiencies. But unfortunately, it's very hard to do that on this gun. I don't recommend you doing it because you you will most probably ruin the gun, uh, at least the breech. It is possible to buy a new breech, but it's not cheap. Um, so uh, I don't recommend that you do it. Do it. Uh, so uh, I was talking about high high power before. Uh, personally, I also bought this gun because I want high power. 
and um, currently it's set to 130 or to almost 135 joules so I'm getting basically the same energy as an unregulated version this is of course with the bigger transfer port uh, I have the regulator set to uh, about 185 bars and I still get 12 consistent shots. So that's amazing. That's So basically I get same energy as unregulated, uh, same count, uh, shot count as unregulated, uh, but totally consistent shot and much bigger accuracy than without the regulator. This was my goal that I wanted to achieve with this gun. I could, okay, I could go with the lower pressure, get higher shot count, but hey, this is day state Wolverine. If you bought, if you didn't buy it, bought it for power, I don't know you bought, what you bought it for. Uh, okay, I don't want to bore you anymore. Uh, this is day state Wolverine. Watch the video to the end and you will see my results. Thanks. Pellets JSB 50.15 grain. Unregulated Wolverine. Pressure about 230 bars. I'm going to do a crony of 10 pellets. In total, so two magazines. first five and now I just have to load for the second five I have uh, filled uh, the gun up to about uh, 250 bars um, and the regulator is set to 170 bars. There are no modifications to the gun made yet. That was first five, <coughs> first five shots. Need to fill the magazine. Okay, that will be the second group. I 
think the velocity is getting slightly lower so we might be up to the to the point where the regulator is set I will try to do two more shots I will do five more shots so we know exactly how much we got left Okay, so we did 15 shots with the regulator set to 170 bars uh, and the starting pressure was 250 bars and right now we are at 100 bars so modification are definitely needed for uh, the regulator uh, for the gun to be efficient with the regulator Second five. Third five. see the results. It's a sunny day after a while. Okay. Uh, I started with uh, 250 bars so I filled the rifle 250 bars and then I started shooting.
Okay, that's 10 shots. Third magazine. I'm hoping to get about 15 consistent shots. like this ricochet. Just let me adjust the crown a bit and I will aim a little lower in the ground. That was 15. We see that the velocity is just a little under 260 meters per second. I'm not sure if this was just one shot or if the velocity is starting to decrease. Um, I will do one or two more shots so I can see if the velocity is really dropping. Yeah, I think it is. I'll just do one more. Yeah. So, we get 15 totally regulated shots, uh, which is quite good, uh, considering that we are achieving 260 meters per second with uh, 50.15 grain pellets. That's still about I think 110, 150 joules. Same test, only this time with the lighter pellets, uh, JSB's 44.75 uh, grain. Okay, I'm gonna do uh, 15 shots again because that's uh, the current. Um, uh, shot count we are getting right now from the uh, settings that we made on the regulator and the gun. Moving the third one.
Okay, so here are the modifications that you should do to the gun uh, in order to have good uh, efficiency and shot count uh, with the regulator. Uh, basically, you first you take off uh, the stock and then uh, you take off the trigger mechanism by unscrewing these four screw in the bottom, screws in the bottom, and then uh, take off those two screws. I already uh, disassembled it completely. And then take off, take out this screw in the hammer. And uh, when you do that, I will just assemble it back so you can see how I disassembled it. And then um, you just pull on this lever, pull it and take it out. Uh, and you will see your mainspring and you will be able to take out the hammer. And you will see that in the hammer there is uh, an additional weight. So in the hammer there is a weight that you will find it and you should remove it because uh, uh, unregul unregulated gun uh, requires a heavier hammer than regulated. So you should remove it. Um, and then um, you should adjust this screw to be sticking out for about I believe it's just a second approximately 13.6 millimeters um, um, you will probably have to uh, unscrew it a bit so it will go further out because uh, unregulated rifle is set up for a little higher power for bigger punch and bigger punch you get with the longer uh, the hammer travel. Uh, once you will take this uh, um, weight out you will also uh, uh, loosen the mainspring a bit so it will be a little easier to cock which is always a good thing. Um, so that's it. Um, one more reference you can guide yourself from. Now you have to remember uh, in order to uh, use this reference you have to have uh, the gun charged and the uh, you have to have the valve uh, in the system so basically the only time you will get this position is when the uh, valve rod is stopping the hammer from going further forward. So um, best settings you can see that you have uh, over here uh, four dots and these are actually made for your power reference. Uh, the gun when uh, it comes out of the shop usually is in, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, screw is aligned with the uh, most left dot so it's, this is the highest power. The further le left you go with the uh, hammer's uh, screw, the higher power, the more right you go, lower power. So uh, you can see that right now I have it set about on the second or maybe even in the middle of the second and the third uh, dot. So this, is, this worked uh, the best for me. I was able to get about 15 shots uh, from a 250 bar fill uh, and the energy was around uh, 110 bars per shot. Uh, sorry, 110 joules per shot. Um, now, of course, you, uh, you can also do this, so uh, do this adjustment of the screw while you are shooting and this is a good thing because otherwise you will, if you wanted to experiment you will always have to disassemble the gun but you don't have to do that so uh, the way you do this between shooting is so, uh, so you can uh, uh, put everything together I won't put in the main spring right now but of course you will put everything together and uh, also the uh, trigger assembly everything except for the stock you cannot put the, the stock on and then you can set this screw by of course unscrewing first this one in the bottom so let's put it out so of course each time you adjust this screw you have to unscrew this one because this one holds 
this one in place so it doesn't rotate. So if we go back to the assembled rifle, sorry. Okay, so you have everything assembled with the trigger, everything is here, up here. And you still have enough place to get with a small Allen key over here, uh, Allen key wrench, uh, and just uh, loosen it. And then you can put through this small hole here a straight screwdriver and make the adjustment because the hammer screw, so this screw, has a little cut on from this end. So it's a hole through and there's a little cut and you can adjust it with the screwdriver. Um, so basically what you do when you have everything assembled, find out if you get too high power or too uh, or the power is too low, then just loosen this screw and then go through here with the long and very thin straight screwdriver. It uh, cannot be more than uh, three millimeters thick. Um, and then make the adjustment. If you go further to the right, you will uh, uh, make the power lower. If you go to the left, you will uh, increase the power. And then again, tighten this screw and then try it out again, of course. Uh, there's just one thing you have to know when you are doing this. Um, the only time you can get through here with the screwdriver is if you have the, uh, the rifle on safe. And to, uh, there's uh, two ways to put this rifle uh, on safe, as you probably know. One is, of course, with uh, this, uh, so with the uh, safety. And the other is just simply by raising the bolt. This is a Wolverine feature. So that's basically it. This uh, setting worked best for me. Uh, I had uh, the regulator set it to uh, about 170, maybe a little more bar with uh, these results. And these results also give me, uh, gave me a great uh, uh, group uh, on uh, nine, 90 meters. The group was about uh, I, I think about uh, 300, uh, sorry, 30 millimeters or 25, something like that. So, very good group. So, that's it. I hope it works for you as well. I'm just getting ready to do some long distance shooting. Uh, I got a target set up at 90 meters.
No, empty. Yeah, I think we're well, about done. Let's try two or three shots more. Let's give it three. Okay, we're not done yet. That, that's 20 shot, shots, sorry. Amazing. Let's try a few more. It's over. One more. So the difference is unbelievable. Uh, before we got 15 shots with a lower energy, now we got 20 plus shots and with the higher energy. Before we got 260 meters per second about uh, and now we got almost 265 meters per second so really good results uh, regulated adjusted uh, for high power uh, this is what we've been, all been waiting for
regulator set to 180 bars, so we're hoping to achieve quite uh, high power, somewhere near the uh, unregulated rifle. Uh, pellets uh, GSB 50.15 grain and uh, modifications made to the regulator uh, and uh, also anti-bound system made and uh, enlarged trans transfer port. Okay, I'm hoping to get uh, about 10 shots. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. This will be probably the highest power I will get from Wolverine with uh, these pellets, so 50.15 grain. Uh, yeah, okay, let's give it a go. This is un unregulated. shots I will do about three or four more I'll see how it goes Okay, I'll do 10 in total. Try one more. Uh, there is one more modification. There is one more modification I made, and that was to the regulator uh, regulator's chamber. Uh, Altaros was good enough to send me both the big one and the small chamber. Uh, for 303 caliber, I definitely recommend uh, using the big one, because you need uh, more air than for 22, of course. For 22, it's enough to use the small one, probably. I don't know, I didn't try it. Um, the modification I made is I took some of the excessive material off here, as you can see, just over the o-ring. And the most important part is on the interior. Uh, over here, 
just wait till focus okay uh, over here you see that uh, this is flush inside it's the hole stops at this point on the whole surface and with mine I actually took some material off on the uh, interior uh, side to make this cylinder deeper. Of course you cannot uh, draw, uh, drill just a bigger hole inside because uh, the, the hole for the, where the regulator fits in has to stay uh, intact. That's why uh, you only have to take some material off around it and leave it still thick enough uh, to handle pressures uh, because over here will be like, I don't know, from 150 to uh, 200 bars, depends on the regulator settings. Uh, and this, of course, uh, has gave me a little bigger shot count and uh, higher power with uh, the same pressure, so bigger uh, pressure efficiency. Big thanks to guys from Altaros for supplying the air regulators.